Welcome back to another Inventor tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to look at the sweep function and how we can apply it to a simple model. So let's jump on in and see where we end up. So we're going to start off as normal with a 2D sketch and we're going to start off on our horizontal plane which is our uh, XZ plane. I'll just rotate it around so the view cube's orientated correctly. And I'm just going to do a straight rectangle uh, right over the origin. I won't dimension it because I want uh, this to be fully constrained so I'll dimension it. Uh, against a physical dimension, so the center point over the origin vertically and the uh, center point horizontally against the center point of the origin. Um, and then I'm going to dimension the uh, length and height, or the, the horizontal length and the vertical height. Set them at 300 for the horizontal length and 150 for the vertical length. I'm then going to put a little circle in the corner um, and this is going to be a sort of bolt hole position um, and I'll want to uh, constrain this dimensionally off the uh, top and line, top line and uh, Side, line to the side of it as well. Just do that again because it didn't quite select it so we're going to again dimension it horizontally and vertically against the two adjacent lines. There we go it's done it for some reason this time. Uh, I'm going to modify these straight away to be uh, 15 and 15, but I'm going to actually name them whole vert equals uh, 10 mil and whole horiz uh, equals 10 mil. And then they'll be known in our parameter list as these new names whole horiz and whole vert. Uh, I will actually change them to 15 because they looked a bit close to the perimeter. Um, and I do need to, uh, I want to do a rectangular array, but before I do the rectangular array, I have missed off one dimension, which is obviously the diameter of the hole itself. So I'll dimensionally constrain the whole diameter and I'll set that to a value of 15 mil. And now I'll do my rectangular array. So I'm going to select the geometry, which is the hole. Uh, my direction one is my horizontal line. I'm going to want three holes in there. And the separation, I'm going to select the feature di dimension, which is the, horiz the horizontal length. D0 and then I'm actually going to minus off of it or actually I'm going to divide it by uh, 2 to start off with yeah divide it by 2 three, I did 3 but 2 looks better, like right and then I'm actually going to minus the uh, parameter which I can select from uh, the arrow to the side of the dimension and then I can go and I'm going to minus the whole horizontal measurement. This will then bring the holes into position um, so there's one on each end and one in the middle. I'm then going to do the vertical height so I'm going to flip it because it's going the, currently the wrong way I still want two holes and this I'm going to select the feature diameter which is the 
feet, dimension, sorry, which is the vertical height. I won't need to divide it by anything, but I am going to have to minus uh, two times the vertical height of the whole, whole vert. So this parameter, whole vertical, and then multiply that by two. So uh, D1 minus whole vert times two. And you can see that the uh, grade holes are now in exactly the right position. And they're mathematically constrained to the uh, original box size, which is ideal. Um, so when we're happy, we'll uh, we just click OK. Um, and we can then start thinking about uh, putting our sweep path. And our sweep path is going to be this path that is like a, an O-ring path around the holes. So I'm going to draw a line between each of the uh, bolt hole positions. Just going center point to center point, just to the to the edge perimeter of the circle. Just keep on going round. So I'm basically going to have uh, six individual lines, um, and then I'm going to put a. I'm just going to move the dimensions out so they're a bit easier to see the uh, lot, the um, sweep path. I'm then going to offset the circle and I can do two versions here. I can either dimension it against the uh, diameter of the circle which I'm doing or I can dimension it against the smaller circle so it's sort of a, uh, it'd be then uh, skin thickness or then I'm going to do the same to the other uh, holes, but this time this dimension that I'm uh, using, I'm going to select the original uh, hole diameter of the, for the outer circle 25. So if I adjust that uh, original dimension, then all the rest of the holes, uh, the outer holes, will uh, dimension at the same time as well. So I'll do all the offsets first, and I'll come around and do all the. Uh, dimension. So every time we do a new dimension I'm going to link it back to the original 25mm dimension which in my case is D13 and we'll just do all of them okay um, and now what I'm going to do is because I want this uh, path to track around all of the original holes. I'm now going to trim out a whole lot of the outer holes to create this path. So I'm going to go around and trim out these edges or these parts of the circle um, which leaves this path around the original bolt holes. I'm going to fill it the edges, sorry, fill it, fill it the corners to allow a better transition. I'm going to go 4 mil, uh, and if I just keep on going around all of them you can see it's trimming out the little excess line but also if I keep on going around they'll all be uh, linked as well. The measurements will all be linked to the original 4 mil measurement um, so it'll make it constrained as well. Uh, last couple to do and now you can see we've got this quite nice path running around the inside of the bolt holes which is our sweep path I'm going to finish the sketch and now I'm going to extrude uh, the outer and the inner or the whole section um, so I've just selected the outer and the inner I'm going to flip it so it extrudes vertically downwards because I want to keep the drawing on top for what I'm doing. I'm going to do it 10 mil. Uh, click OK and then I'm going to, because the extrusion's hidden the sketch, I'm going to turn the visibility of the sketch on. 
Now what I want to do is set up a new work plane uh, in the middle of one of the straight line uh, straight line parts of the sweep path. It can be anywhere as long as it's in the, on the um, straight part and then I'm going to start a 2D sketch on this new plane. Now what I need to do is I'm going to slice the graphics so that I can see with the plane and the part that I'm working on. Then I'm going to rotate round so I can see the uh, sweep path and I'm going to project the geometry of that particular uh, sweep and it's going to uh, give me a tiny little yellow dot which is uh, projected that onto the new plane where I can draw now I can draw a circle um, which is going to be our, uh, uh, our o-ring seal um, and I dimensioned it now I can sweep I can select the profile which is that small three mil circle And then I've got to select the path, which is the uh, inside line that we've been drawing. Uh, we get some various different options with the orientation. We want the first one, which is our follow path orientation. Uh, the fixed one keeps it in the same plane. We don't want that. We want to follow it all the way around. And our output, we want it to cut because we want to leave a rebate for an O-ring seal to go in there. And you can see straight away it's cut the path out and it's left a, a indentation where we could put our uh, seal if we wanted to. We'll turn the visibility of the sketch off now. And you can see uh, straight away it's, it's all looking pretty good. Now what we need to do is test um, to, well actually we're going to put some chamfers. I'll put some chamfers on the other side, 2x2 two two mil chamfers. Um, so I'll just go all the way around so just give a quick chamfer to the holes um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, fill it and I'm actually going to select change the select mode to loop because I want to put a fillet around the entire top edge so when it selects it will select the whole top uh, left click in it will then give me a, 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 a fillet on the top edge and I think I should put some fillets on the corners as well, just to give, make everything a bit rounded, a bit nicer. There we go, last one. Uh, I'll click OK or Apply. And I'll just uh, so yeah, we now need to check that it's um, fully constrained uh, against the various measurements. So. Uh, what we'll do is bring up our, our parameters panel, our FX panel, and D0 and D1 are our length and or vertical length and horizon, horizontal length and vertical height. So I'll change the horizontal length to 250 and the vertical uh, length to uh, 100. And you can see straight away it's, uh, it, 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 the, the drawing has changed, the model has changed. Um, the holes look very, very close to the uh, perimeter of the actual rectangle. So I'm going to change those. I'm going to bring them in 5 mil each, so 20 and 20. So our horizontal and vertical position is adjusted. And you'll see that when I flip it around, the actual rebate for the O-ring seal has also moved and changed uh, in relationship to those positions. So it's, it is fully constrained. Um, really, really useful uh, to be able to do this because you can make some pretty considerable changes without uh, redrawing and remodeling the whole thing. Um, I've done that. Done that. I, I think we need to change some more parameters. So I'll edit the sketch, um, and I think one of the parameters that we could check to make sure it still works as fully constrained is. Um, our hole diameter so uh, I'll change that and I'll move it up a mil to 16 mil and the radius on the corners of the sweep path just to make sure that is all constrained is currently set at 4 mil so I will change that to 6 mil give a bit better path and uh, finish the sketch and straight away it's it's updated so that's really 
good and it's fully constrained and parametric. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in another Inventor tutorial.